Well, hello everyone, it's Rose, and I'm here today with something a little different. Um, so what I'm going to be doing today is uh, doing a time lapse drill and chat on the French peacock from Royal Diamond Painting. But I also want to take just a moment at the beginning of this video to show you my work area and the way that I have found to be a very efficient way of working on a very large diamond painting. So um, the French peacock from Royal Diamond Painting is, as you see, 75 by 100 and they're square drills. Now I started working on this about five days ago. I've actually drilled for three days, I think. And this is what I've gotten done so far. Um, there are 89 colors in this diamond painting. Count them, 89. And so um, I actually had to come up with a different way of working on my diamond painting so that color changes were kept to a minimum, which is saying a lot because with 89 colors, many of them with just one or two bags for the entire diamond painting, there's a lot of color changes. And if you just take a look here, like it's all confetti, all confetti, even uh, the, you know, what looks like a solid color on the uh, image is all confetti. So sometimes there are uh, blocks of color. They're never very big, but I have uh, been able to have some success using a seven placer multi-placer. Now I'm gonna try and straighten out the drills a little bit later, but for right now, I just wanna place the drills. Um, and I try to straighten as I go along, but sometimes it's not perfect. Anyway, um, I gotta say I'm very, very happy with this kit. It is going to look absolutely amazing. Um, now, one of the ways that I'm working as quickly as possible is I have multiple colors out at any given time. And um, right now I'm working from uh, right to left because I started on this end of the canvas uh, and I'm working across for this strip. Um, and as you notice, for those of you who watch my drill and chats a lot, this is a bigger strip than I'm used to working with. Usually I work with strips this big. Um, but I found that because of the number of colors, I was constantly changing colors and pouring drills out of boats back into containers and then pouring drills out of containers into boats like just too often. So now I'm doing a... a not quite twice as big, but almost twice as big a strip. And um, I'm doing it in uh, thirds because there are three pieces of cover paper here. Um, so what else do I need to tell you? All right, I have had viewers asking about my silicone baking mats. And as you see, I have one two, because there's an overlap here, three, four, five, just underneath my can, like three underneath my canvas, two more on top of my canvas. And what I'm going to show you now is what I do to protect my canvas as I'm working. So while there's paper down on a section, that's fine. But um, I always use this blue mat which is about I don't know eight by something and the other thing about that I like about uh, the silicone baking mats is if a diamond comes loose it sticks to the mat but it doesn't stick to the mat permanently uh, so this one just came loose here I don't even have to check the color because it's the only one whoops it's the only one that's loose here sorry I was not pointing the camera at where my uh, where the action was okay so it it's stuck to the mat when um, when I put the mat down. So I just lay the mat down over top 
and this protects my working surface. The silicon is um, non-stick, so um, it will never stick to any exposed adhesive or anything like that. Now, I've been working on this in thirds, so I worked uh, this section here yesterday early afternoon, and then this section here to here. Um, late afternoon, early evening, and then uh, I did a couple of colors, uh, the two primary colors uh, here, um, working until about 1.30 last night. And so what I do is I have more baking mats, and to protect the uh, exposed adhesive, what I do is, and also to uh, delineate where I've drilled to, I lay down my mat. It doesn't slip on the, on the diamonds. It also, like if I, like I'm pressing down on a blank spot on the canvas, nothing sticks. This you can use instead of parchment paper. And I have a second one here just to protect um, the, the other little edge here. Whoops. The other little edge here. That was just my large, uh, large white tray. Hold on. I'm just picking it up. Okay, that was just my large white tray that um, that fell. Um, because I'm using, as you can see, I'm using the entirety of my um, drafting table. Um, so nothing is going to, like, nothing slips. My drafting table is angled, doesn't matter. Uh, the silicon here it does two things. First, the reason I first started using it was that it keeps the diamond painting from sliding underneath this bar that holds it down to the table because sometimes it would still slide. With the silicon in place, top and bottom, that doesn't happen. There's no sliding, um, like top and bottom of the canvas. And second off, it keeps my trays here and they don't slide. Like, I mean, you know, I can move them easily, but they're not going to slide. I could tilt this table considerably more and they would not slide off that silicone, okay? So, um, so I love the silicone baking mats for all kinds of reasons. And um, you can actually cut up your silicone baking mats if you want to, if you decide to get them uh, to cover, you know, smaller areas of your canvas, if, if you want to. Sorry about that, my... Uh, hand got in the way. Um, I haven't done that yet. I, I have, see, these ones here I got at Amazon, and you can see they're about a, a millimeter thick, I would say. These I got on AliExpress, and they're about half a, centim, uh, half a millimeter thick. And um, the ones on uh, AliExpress you can get in multiple colors. Uh, it just happens that I, I ordered from a site that sends you random colors and I got three brown ones which at first I wasn't happy with but I don't care now um, so they're just really great and you can use them forever so uh, every day or two when I start like I just wash them before and washing means just rinsing them off with water and then patting them dry with a dishcloth or with a tea towel um, I just wash them but you know because I have pets I've got more cat here uh, this is dog hair, actually. <clears throat> I think it's fell, fallen off my splatter. Anyway, um, the other thing I like about these, and a lighter color drill mat, uh, because if I were using the green ones that I have, like underneath the diamond painting, I would be able to see through them a little bit. And if there were white ones, and I think there might be white ones, you would also be able to see through um, the mat to the diamond painting. Uh, but I like just being able to see a little bit of what's underneath the diamond painting. Um, and these are cheaper. Like these are, I don't know, I think I paid $3.23 each for these. Uh, so super cheap. And um, they would cover a 30 by 40 diamond painting uh, or a space on a diamond painting 30 by 40 centimeters uh, wide. So, you know, you buy a few of them and you can do any diamond painting size with, uh, you know, cover them over with... Um, with the um, silicone. So I also like them because I'm just going to 
take one of these trays at random and pour out some drills on my baking mat. And let me just grab one of my drill pens. Okay, so sometimes you just have a few. You don't want to pull out a tray or something like that. Like if you're like me and you use a different tray for each one of your diamond paintings, you don't necessarily want to pull out a new tray for each. Um, wait a minute, which color was that? Uh, for each time you need just one or two drills. So I just pour them onto the baking mat. And I'm just going to zoom in here for you. So, okay, you see here there's a whole bunch. They're flipped over. On the baking mat, it's super easy to like it's super it's not easy to flip them over onto their backs like onto the top but when they're on the top super easy to flip them over and then you can just pick them up so sometimes I use the baking mat instead of a tray uh, for small amounts of diamonds now one of the other tools that I have here that um, I love and I'm just gonna zoom out again uh, go out a little bit farther okay um, is I bought this. Okay, now this, um, ignore the blue um, rubber handle and, and stuff. This is just a USB powered keyboard vacuum that I bought on AliExpress. Um, I put just a piece of a uh, pair of pantyhose uh, in here um, because the, um, the filter inside, I just want to protect it for as long as possible so the the pantyhose help it so it's plugged into uh, to my outlet over there and um, you just press the button and it's fantastic if you have a drill spill uh, I think I paid about 10 bucks for this one Hold on. okay so I, I just cleaned the silicon mat so it's it's um, there's no dust on it that would make these drills come up a little bit easier. But, okay, I'm gonna do something else. Okay, hold on. And yeah, it'll slow down for a minute. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now, hold on. So I'm just gonna take the rest of these drills and pour them out on my table here. And um, you can see how effective this is, like if you were to, just spill drills on your floor or something like that. Okay, so now I have to turn it off. And then um, it's ingeniously designed so that first you can operate it with one hand if you want to. And there's uh, that sort of cylinder in the middle. So your drills won't fall back out. So then you can just pour them out into your drill tray, no problem. There you go, there's a few left and um, I can't get them right now because I need two hands. Uh, so actually what I'll, hold on. Okay, there we go, I think that's it, is that it? No, I still got a few left. Uh, I just wanna loosen my fingers because I think they're just stuck on there with static. Okay, I don't want to spill drills all over my diamond painting, so I'm just going to put you in the holder for a second. And this is not a terribly professional video because, you know, I'm uh, just trying to show you how I work before I get into the drill and chat, or the time lapse, and then I'll record a drill and chat over top of, uh, over top of the drill and chat video. So this is, um, whoops, I just dropped the... Uh, <laughs> the nozzle for the vacuum cleaner um, this is the plastic that comes uh, in the vacuum cleaner and I don't know if you guys have ever had a little you know a black and decker uh, mini vac or whatever and uh, they come with the pla with those foam filters and um, after a while the foam filter falls apart you know when you wash it and so forth so this way I'll wash the nylon, or actually I won't wash it, I'll just cut another piece uh, if it ever does get dirty. It also traps most of the dust from getting into the workings of the vacuum cleaner. And this uh, actually has, you can remove the, the nozzle. I can't remember if there's another nozzle. I don't care. Uh, this is the only one I need.
anyway, so I love this. I put, uh, I just had like, it's uh, just a long piece of um, uh, rubber that uh, I wrapped around it, put a little uh, carabiner on, and so I've got it hung on a hook on the side of my desk, so it's always handy. That vacuum cleaner has a super long cord, and um, and so it's very, very handy. Okay, so let me take you out of the holder again. And I'm done with this, so I'll just push it back, and I'll show you the rest of my workspace. So um, I bought one of those chargers, uh, like out, mini plug outlets, uh, when I went on my cruise um, to use in my cabin, and I find it's very helpful here. Um, this here, I have, there's 89 colors. There's only 64 Tic Tac containers that fit in a single box. So this is a Ferrero Rocher box uh, that I found uh, in the garbage room in the building. Somebody just left it out. Um, and so I use it to hold the drills so that they're all in one place. And sorry about that. Pippi is getting very excited about a snow plow or something that she sees outside. And this is my diamond painting notebook. I've got it here just to keep the back, the back row of uh, drill containers from falling apart. Uh, I have my iPad so that I can watch videos on YouTube or, yeah, mostly watch videos on YouTube uh, while I'm drilling or listen to radio or whatever. And I've got, I don't even know how many colors I've got. One, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen colors at a time. I could not have left these out like this when my cat Marvin was alive because Marvin would jump on my, uh, drafting table and he would just get his nose in all my business and overturn trays and stuff. I know some of you have pets, and I see here that I spilled a couple of uh, drills into the wrong drill tray when I was emptying the vacuum cleaner. Um, that's because I was trying to go fast. Um, anyway, but um, Pippi and Micah, of course, uh, oh, wrong color that I'm moving. Uh, Pippi and Micah, of course, do not uh, jump up on the, ta uh, the drafting table. So I am uh, okay with using it um, with, and, and I just leave all of these out uh, overnight or during the day when I'm not working on it. So this is great. That may not be something that works for you in your situation. And what I've done is I've labeled all of the drill boats with the different symbols on my canvas. And then I'm just gonna take you on a mini road trip over here. And these are all the rest of the drill boats uh, for this diamond painting, okay? So 89 drill boats, all labeled. I've got all my symbols and stuff. Right here we've got a whole bunch of different symbols. And some of them I've used in kits before. Some of them were brand new with this diamond painting. Oh, that's for the Crystal China doll uh, that I'm working on, and I just um, I just leave the drills in a bag um, until the next time that I do a time lapse. Okay, so then what? Oh, and that's my niece, Jeannie. I just got that picture at Christmas. I just love this picture so much. That's her on her birthday wearing the traditional Korean outfit. She's just, oh my God, she's just gorgeous. Anyway, um... Let's see, what else can I tell you before we start? Okay, so what else do I have? I have tape because I don't know about you, but I find I'm always using tape uh, for different things while I'm diamond painting. Uh, primarily for the edges of the diamond paint. Oh, whoops, you can't see what I'm doing. Primarily to cover the exposed uh, glue on the edges of the diamond painting, but sometimes for other reasons. I have what I call, whoops, in the wrong place. Uh, what I call a mix tray and I also have what I call a mix container. So these are just perfect drills that uh, have fallen on the floor or you know got you know ov over the course of me working on a diamond painting get carried around the apartment. When I pick one up I can't just throw it away. I have to keep it. That's me. 
I have to keep it. And then I, um, so as I'm working, I put them in here. If they fall on the floor and I, you know, I don't know what color they are, I just drop them in the mix tray and then eventually put it in here and then eventually put them in another bottle. Then I've got my trash drill tray, which since I've got this set up here, I will move closer to me. And as I'm working, if I find trash drills, I will put them in here and then I will move them into here. So this is the trash. Oops, let's see if I can focus. This is the trash so far from this diamond painting. Um, there's not that much of it. Oh, there's another drill. See? Uh, and I don't know what color it is, so I'm just going to drop it in there. Okay. Um, with 89 colors, there is such fine color gradation that I don't even try to identify drills, random drills that I find here and there. I just throw them away. Um, okay, what else? So then I have my IKEA little storage thing. And I've got uh, my drill pens. Um, this is one I made from, what is it? It's a Bic. Hold on. Bic Gelosity. Uh, and what I did was I removed the barrel and I, uh, I hot glued a four placer to one end and I pushed a, um, the end of a pink drill, like a, just the, just the brass barrel from the tip of a regular pink pen into the print end like the, the writing end, and I hot glued it into, into place. So that's working for me. I wish the barrel stuck out a little bit longer, uh, a little bit farther. If I make another one when my next pen goes, I will push it out a little bit farther. Um, so this works. It's super light and it's comfortable. I have my glasses for diamond painting. I have my water bottle. Gotta keep hydrated. And then I have a bunch of other stuff. So these are, are my uh, regular tools that I need for different things. This was actually a tool I bought at Lee Valley. Hold on. At Lee Valley. I thought it would be good for lifting drills. Eh, it's not. Um, well, you know what? It actually, it would be. But I would have to crazy glue this into place or hot glue this into place. Because this goes up and down. And so it actually, that that's a bit of a problem. So... I could crazy glue it into place and that would be a super tool for lifting drills. Better than tweezers because what I find is sometimes tweezers scratch your drills where the reason that I bought this was because, oh, okay, let's see what I mean here. So uh, when you push this down, it pushes the two sides together and then you can actually get under your drills and lift them. Uh, when you push this barrel back, it becomes a wider thing. But let's take a look at it when it's closed. Um, you see how it's just about the width of a drill? So you could lift the drill with that. So anyway, that's what I bought that for. Um, then what do I have? Oh, these are, uh, I can't throw anything diamond painting related away. So these are the barrels of drill pens that I've used the tips for something else but I have to keep the drill pen and I just haven't put them away. This is a garlic crusher. Let's see. Also that I bought at Lee Valley many years ago. It's fantastic for mincing garlic, but I got a, one that I like even better, a star fruit. Uh, and I use this to separate drills that are stuck together. Works better than my other method, which is pennies in a crazy glue container. Um, this works fantastically. It's a little pricey though. The garlic crusher cost me, I think, I don't know. I, well, I don't know what it cost me when I bought it because I've had it for probably 10 or 15 years. But um, now I think it's about $22 or something like that. What else? Got my hand cream because, you know, you don't want dry hands when you're diamond painting. What else do I have? Oh, more body lotion. Uh, this is just sort of a straight edge. And it's my Hudson's Bay card. It's not a, it's the, the points card. Uh, don't use that anymore. Um, an extra drill boat. 
glasses cleaner, my glasses case. Oh, this here is something that I uh, developed a little while ago. And it's to count diamonds. So for round diamonds, 30 diamonds is at the uh, black mark there. And for square diamonds, 30 diamonds is at the red mark. And, you know, there's 10 diamonds, there's 20 red uh, um, square diamonds, and then there's 30 red diamonds. For rounds, I just counted the 30. I didn't mark off the 10s and so forth. Um, and this is something that, you know, sometimes I used to use. I don't use it anymore, but it's still on my table. Then I've got a bunch of notepads, just in case I want to take random notes. And uh, this is a knife that I use when I get packages. Um, like Amazon boxes and things like that. Okay, um, have I shown you my storage? Yeah, I have. But you know what? I'm gonna show you again uh, because it was a long, long time ago. So in here I have the uh, other Ferrero Rocher boxes that I found that day that are good for holding um, containers. And um, this is my Elizabeth Ward bead container. These are the magnifying lenses that I used to use before I got prescription glasses. Um, oh, the nylon. Uh, this is, I think, something I bought at the dollar store. It's a pill crusher uh, that I wanted to use for breaking up diamonds that were stuck together. It doesn't work very well. I don't know why I've still got it. I should throw it away, but I don't like throwing things away. Uh, crazy glue, just in case. Um, this is a dryer sheet that I use to wipe out my drill boats from time to time to keep them from being uh, too staticky. It doesn't matter that it's old, it still works. Um, my magnifying glass, don't have to use that too often since I got the prescription lenses. And my scissors, which I use, I don't know, for a whole bunch of things. Um, and then what have I got here? I have my uh, permanent markers. Um, my blue tack, which I haven't used in a dog's age, and my white tack, um, and then my big drill boats. Oh, another, another one of those Jellosity pens. Uh, looks like it might be nearly out of ink. What else is in there? What is that? What the heck is this? Oh, I don't know what this is. I don't know why I've got that. I'll get rid of it. I had it for a reason. This I kept um, because I thought it might be useful to hold something. And I like little containers. I have a thing about little containers. Okay. Sorry about the shaky cam. Uh, let's move that pen to another location. Okay. That might have all actually fallen out of place. Okay. Then what I've got is my uh, masking tape. This is double-sided uh, carpet tape. I have, I don't know, about five more rolls in my storage room. This is my duct tape, which I use for all kinds of things. More masking tape, more masking tape. Uh, this is duct tape, Gorilla brand. It's got it like a leaf pattern on it. Uh, and then black masking, uh, black duct tape. Uh, these are some of my... Um, empty boats. I have another, I don't know, 70 or 80 uh, that are sitting in a bag. I haven't sorted all my bits into uh, different, different containers yet. These are my little plastic bags for drills. I have packing tape here. And then I have um, regular uh, invisible tape in case I want to, anyway, just because. And then I've got lots of pens. I like writing with different col colors of pens. So I've got brown, I've got blue, and I've got, I don't know what color this is. What color is this? Green? Probably green. I don't know. Uh, purple. Um, and then these are more tapes because gotta have tape. Uh, then in here I've got um, a headlamp that I bought some time ago and it is uh, just sitting here now because I've got better solutions 
Um, I've got a small cutting mat at the back there. Let's see. If, yeah, just a small cutting mat that I got at the dollar store in the back there. Uh, and then just a few little diamond containers. Uh, and a couple of more uh, rulers. I had a plan for those rulers and then I decided, nope, not going to use them for what I planned on, so they're kind of garbage. Uh, in here I have my spare uh, Tic Tac containers from the uh, set of 120, well, I bought 256 of them, and these are, are ones that, anyway, they're kind of leftovers. Got some parchment paper. Um, I have my whiteout for when I'm writing and I make mistakes. I have a little bag. I don't know what the heck that's for. Um, my daughter, my sister's been uh, keeping her test strips. I think these are text test your um, uh, for use with contour next meter. Yeah, it's a gluco meter test strip. So uh, she keeps these just in case I ever want uh, more drill containers. Um, I used to keep my cover sheets. I don't need them anymore now that I've discovered um, now that I have discovered uh, the silicon um, mats, but I still keep them for whatever. Little pieces of uh, roller, which I use um, for different things, and sometime I'll show you. And then uh, when I get a box uh, like a, this was, oh, this was from Halloween candy. Uh, what I do is I cut it up because I use the strips to separate rows of my, uh, drills in my containers. Just a second, I'm moving you again. So if you, uh, see this, again, I'm on a slanted surface on my work table. So I've got strips of cardboard from those boxes in between each row so that when I remove this one, the others don't slide down. Uh, this way I'm able to keep all of my drills in perfect order. Um, okay. Well, sorry about that. What else? Oh yeah, this is another sort of headlight, which I only used for traveling. Um, what else? Oh, that's the second one of those uh, headlamps. Uh, this is some glassine paper that uh, that I bought. I thought it was silicon. It's a baking mat. It's not silicon. I can't remember if it sticks to the adhesive or not. No, it's non-stick. Um, so you could actually use this instead of um, a silicon baking mat, but it's slippery on top, okay? So uh, one of the things that I love about my silicon baking mat is that is that it is um, uh, it's not slippery. This is slippery. Stuff is going to slide off it. But you could use it to bake, um, and you can also you know like I'm pressing really really hard on the adhesive, and it just comes up. So for you know this would be I don't know how big this is. Let's see. Um. See, this is 30. It's almost, uh, yeah, it's 30, but it's 40 by, I bet, 50. Let's see. That's 30 by 60. Okay, 30 by 60. And, um, so it will crack because it's like a glassine kind of paper. Um, so you could use this. I could use this uh, to replace plastic covers on my um, diamond paintings that come with plastic covers. I hate plastic covers. I like the fact that, you know, usually it indicates that there's poured glue underneath, but I just don't like working with plastic covers. So uh, if I ever don't want to work with um, uh, the silicon baking mats, I can work with this glassine paper that I bought on AliExpress. And if anybody's interested in the links for this, I have all the links. Um, I can uh, add them in a pinned comment or in the description down below. Because I'm showing you so much stuff, I'm not going to add all the links in, but if anybody who wants a link for something, I have links for all of this.
Okay, let me take you back to, okay, so what's in my third drawer? Oh, my third drawer are other boats that I've pre-labeled from other kits, and I just keep them here um, because, you know, often uh, companies will use the same symbols, so, um, so I've got all those symbols pre labeled on there. Uh, these are Ikea containers, by the way. Uh, I, I buy a lot of them, and I use them for all kinds of stuff. And then, before Christmas, I went to um, Michael's, and I bought some more uh, Craftmate Lockables containers. Uh, this is the Craftmate Lockables that I've got kitted up for Europa and Zeus. Um, and I have a baggie that is uh, clipped in there uh, that has other containers. And here I have the uh, trash from Europa and Zeus. I keep the trash for all my diamond paintings separate until I've completed the post review. And uh, then the last part of the post review is me pouring the trash into my uh, trash um, jar. And, um, yeah, so then I have um, some more uh, prescription bottles just in case I ever need them for drills. Okay, let me show you then. Now, behind my work table, so here's my work table. There's my Roomba. Love my Roomba. And then here is um, my other container. Now, this is um, cat food cases. Uh, for the cat food that I used to use. These are great if you've got like a 40 by 50 diamond painting. Uh, you could buy these at um, you could buy these at a dollar store or something like that. And as you see, I have done that. Uh, but I find that these work just as well. And then what I do is I, I put it on my tray, on my table um, this way. And then, well, these are, okay. And then I separate the bags so that they don't fall into each other uh, this way. So the bags are always facing me, and I can just adjust the, um, the size uh, for whatever size bags uh, are in there. And so this is how I organize my bags. And as you see, I use this one for mermaid swinging. I've got, um, got a whole bunch more in my storage closet. That top is all full of diamond painting stuff. Um, well, not all, but there's tons of diamonds painting stuff. Like, tons. There's, look, these are just some of my pink pens. Oops, hold on. These are just yeah, some of my pink pens. Hold on. I didn't realize it wasn't a Ziploc bag. Um, so I put, I put the pens in uh, the, the bags, and then I stick them all in this bag whenever I fill a bag. And, um, and keep them, because I don't know how many times I'm gonna be repeating this, because I can't bear to get rid of anything related to diamond painting. Whoops, oh, and I just found a, I just found a, a big uh, Tupperware bowl that I had been looking for. Um, what else? I've got squishies. Uh, I've got another bag of squishies on the go. And these are the green boats that have an opening and white boats with funnels. Um, those are just some. Okay, I'm going to take you back out of there because that's all my diamond painting stuff in there. And I'm going to show you what's in my... Uh, Stirlight or Gracious Living uh, container. So I have my um, cutting board, uh, which I use for trimming diamond paintings at the end. I also use this sometimes, not always. I sometimes use that uh, to put in between diamond paintings. If I'm doing, if I'm working on multiple diamond paintings at a time, sometimes I'll lay that down with, of course, a um, uh, silicon baking mat. Uh, on underneath it 
to prevent my diamond painting from uh, to prevent it from sliding around on the drills on the diamond painting that it's on top of and then I put a new diamond painting on top of it I put the light pad on top of it and it's great okay so in here I have a bunch of just stuff so this is my mix container those are for those drills that I pick up off the floor and so forth this is my trash container uh, these are holographic um, wrapping, like, um, it's not washi tape, it's actually uh, like wrapping, like for wrapping presents that I bought at um, Dollar Store uh, at Christmas time. They were selling, I think, four rolls for buck twenty-five Canadian, so I bought, I don't know, 12 rolls or something like that. Uh, this is a little roller that I bought at the Pink Raspberry. Uh, and I find it's good for doing small areas of the canvas. I also have my big rolling pin here, which I use on the floor when I do large diamond paintings. Uh, what else do I have in here? I have white nail polish, just in case. I need to, uh, not white, clear nail polish. Uh, because sometimes, like, if I just need to seal one drill that's popping in place, I just pull out the clear nail polish. Uh, I have plumber's tape because this helps to wrap around um, loose multi-placer ends uh, to keep them in place on a drill pen. What else do I have? Oh, uh, oh, these are our um, cover minders that uh, Lizzie, Lizzie's World of Gems gave me at, uh, in October, I think. Um, this is dental wax that I bought because I wanted to try using dental wax instead of uh, other wax. I might do a video on that. I haven't actually tried it yet. Uh, just odds and ends. Uh, a little brush in case I need it. Uh, what's this? Oh, that's oh, that's the other blade for my X-Acto knife. Okay, these are little gifts that came with I don't know, Ever Moment or something like that. These are drill pens, the special drill pens that came. I've never figured out how to use them. Um, what else? Oh, some more of that. More tape. Uh, the this is where I keep the little gifts that people that companies send. So, and then I've got the heavy duty cutter. Um, ah! All right, this. You don't need to see. Okay. Um, let's see. This is oh another bag because I keep I keep bags and I've got some Tombow. Oh, and I got so excited because these Tombow things are selling on Amazon.ca now for about I don't know they go from about five dollars and twelve cents is the cheapest I've ever seen them to fourteen dollars for one of these. And this is, I think, 1.68 ounce, 1.69 ounces, 50 milliliters. So look what I bought, guys. Oops, not in there. I bought, it is Tombow. Where is it? It is Tombow. And I got it on eBay. And it's 500 milliliters. This cost me... $22 Canadian. It's shipped from Japan. I just got it last week. And um, so I'm super happy uh, because I'll be able to use this. I, I love using Tombow for sealing. And so I will be able to use it. What's this? Oh, I have more stickers. I didn't know I had more stickers. These are, yeah, those are good size stickers. Hold on. Good size stickers. Okay, I keep my stickers somewhere else. Uh, and then I have various other glues and things like that. Um, I think I wanted I wanted to try this to um, adhere my canvases to other stuff. And then I've got uh, uh, these are the command strips for hanging hanging um, photos and things. And then I've got a bunch of uh, uh, more storage containers back here, dollar store storage containers. Um, oh, these are uh, bits of ribbon and things like that that I bought at um, what's this. Oh, these are magnetic uh, cards 
that I was using to stick my drill boats to rulers. That's what I bought those two rulers that I showed you earlier for. Um, but then I found that just putting them on the silicon mats works just as well. Uh, more washi tape. More drill containers. Um, this is my fabric fusion, um, which I bought to adhere canvases to canvases. Um, because I did buy some stretch canvas to use as a frame for diamond painting. I haven't actually framed anything with it yet, but someday I will. Oh, look, more bags. These are the bigger bags. Okay, um, I'm going to have to organize this because it's been a little while. Oh, and then, I can't remember where I found this, but it is ribbon that, look, has rhinestones on it. And so I figure this will be a fantastic uh, mat for um, diamond paintings when the frame doesn't quite fit. So I'm really excited to use that for the first time. Uh, what else do I have? Oh, this is where I've got my rotary cutter, which I love. And here I have my um, quarter, half centimeter um, double-sided tape that I bought on AliExpress. It's diamond painting tape. I got it from the Hankins painting store. So the second drawer is more diamond painting supplies. So this is where I store my drill boats and stuff. These are the ones that have cutouts and so forth. Uh, and the white with, um, with uh, funnel. Uh, these are where I store them until this fills up and then I move them into the storage closet. These are my ever moment and my good tweezers, hua can and so forth. Uh, these are some of the tweezers that, um, you know, just the regular cheap tweezers, and then some, just a few of the regular uh, oops, plastic tweezers. Uh, the others are in the storage closet. Uh, so this is the bag that I'm working on right now with drill pens. When it gets too big to fit in this drawer, I will put it in the storage locker. Uh, this is masking tape in different colors that I bought at um, Michael's, and um, I'll use it for uh, mass, uh, matting, uh, especially little diamond paintings that, um, that might be just too small for whatever size frame I buy. And then here we have uh, wax. Uh, oh, and look, another drill boat. Why is that? Oh, it's a medium-sized drill boat. Anyway, it's an interesting size. And then, yeah, it's not it's the only one I have in that size. And then I have labels from my label maker that I had at the office uh, because they'll be useful for different things. And then the bottom drawer here are my supplies for um, framing. So I have a few of those pens, uh, of these um, foam paint brushes in different sizes. I have a few um, polyester, I guess. Uh, they're Fixa brand from Ikea. Um, underneath there is notebooks. This is the toolkit that I use when I am framing. Uh, what else do I have in here? I have my glitter for mixing in. I have my disposable gloves and I have Mod Podge, uh, which I've never used yet. Uh, and I made a note to myself to buy Super Gloss next time. Uh, that next time is going to be far in the future because this is huge. Uh, the Verathane that I use, I keep in my storage locker. Uh, so this here is, um, these are the framing supplies that I keep in my storage closet. So it's my big can of crystal clear, non-yellowing Verathane water-based interior gloss. And um, I like to have lots and lots of carpet tape on hand. What's this? Oh, these are just bags for batteries. Okay, I was in Home Depot and uh, those are for uh, used up batteries. Um, okay, so what else? So yeah, I've got three more 
um, three more uh, rolls of carpet tape, um, which I use to secure uh, diamond paintings to uh, the frames, uh, like the, the backing of the frame, uh, so that they don't slide down or anything like that. Works like a charm. Love it. So I have tons of this stuff on hand. Now I can't remember if the 3M is the kind I like or don't like. I'll tell you in a second. Oh, you know what? It's the kind I don't like because, uh, let's see, how can I get into this? Because, oh my God, why can't I get into it? I might not be able to show you after all. Trying to do it one-handed. Oh, there we go. Okay. So the 3M carpet tape has a plasticized outer coating. And um, I find it's extremely hard to remove. I like carpet tape that has um, paper coating. However, I think that the 3M is probably stronger. Uh, so it's, you know, it's uh, six of one, half dozen of the other, I guess. Um, I suppose if I get really good at um, separating the tape from the, the cover, um, I'll be fine. But right now, this is actually transparent cover. And um, so that's going to be even harder to um, separate. Um, oh my god. This could be a nightmare. Oh well. Uh, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. All right, so on to the next thing. So that's that. All right, I'm going to take you on another little road trip. This is where I make my videos. Here's the cat food right beside the... <laughs> this table does not get used to eat on. This table is purely a junk collection spot diamond painting work area. Um, but this is where I do my um, production of videos and so forth. And now uh, here I have uh, my bag of kits. So these are the kits that I got with the diamond paintings that I bought uh, during the 1111 sale and the Black Friday sale. Uh, so there's probably about 70 kits in here, which I have to sort into their individual components. And then this is just one of the bags of drills uh, from my uh, 1111 buys and, and Black Friday buys. That's um, leftover drills that I have to sort and then over here behind me, more leftover drills that I have to sort. Over here is um, just, I have to clean this up. And, uh, but it, it's my Instant Pot and it's treats for the dog and it's various little baggies and, oh, that's some mending I have to do. Uh, little baggies and things that I need for uh, my unboxings. Um, I've got my diamond scale here, uh, more plastic bags in different sizes, and then these are envelopes that I picked up because I'm going to have a few uh, leftover drill sorting days. I'm going to take you one more place now. No, two more places. Okay, so this is my containers of um, leftover drills. The first shoebox is full of square drills. Second one is full of round drills, special drills, and special shapes, or pebble drills and special shapes. And there's a few empty envelopes in there. Uh, when I add all those leftover drills, uh, these things are going to be completely overwhelmed. And as you see, some of these uh, envelopes are already too full. So it's going to take me probably a week, if I work a couple of hours a day, to... Um, sort through these. And this is just a cookie tin that I kept from Christmas because it'll be good to store drills in, uh, like leftover drills in. Uh, it'll look prettier than that pile uh, in the corner of my living room. 
Um, oh, that's just stuff that I took out of my purse. This is a power bank that I got at um, the Pink Raspberry that I will use to power my light boxes when, uh, or my light pads when I am uh, away from home or if I ever want to drill in the living room. And the other thing is that I can use it to charge my phone. Um, so how about that? Uh, okay, so let's go again. All right, so over here, uh, let's try and focus. This is the book that I keep track of diamond paintings that um, haven't arrived yet. These have actually arrived, these few that are left, they have arrived. Uh, there were about 70 pages in here. Uh, and they're just black and white, because I have a black and white printer. But it's uh, the number of the diamond painting, it's the delivery date, the started date, the finish date, um, the size, and uh, the store that I bought it from. So I've got a few of those left. And then I've got my in progress. And so these are all the diamond paintings that are in progress or that are in my queue. So this is uh, something I received for review. So I'll be working on that concurrently with the French peacock. And there goes Pippi again. Uh, this is, of course, the China doll that I'm working on, um, that I've done a couple of time lapses. Uh, Europa and Zeus, I started drilling that, uh, I guess, back in October. Um, at the request of one of my patrons, Michelle Hoyt. And so normally I don't take a break this long, but I drilled, I drilled on October 11th and maybe the 12th because I finished the first strip. Sorry about the dog. Just a minute. Pippi! Pippi! Stop. Um, but then I took a, I just wanted to mark that I took a break from whenever until I started again. I might start it again after I... Oh my God, she's very excited about something she sees outside. Pippi, Pippi, hey, just a sec. Pippi, stop. No. Okay. Um, so this one uh, will probably be started again when I finish the pink, uh, the uh, French peacock. This is a freebie that I won on AliExpress, and I started drilling it, and then I stopped. Uh, after you know the first three inches I just wanted to um, be able to with my unboxing review uh, say whether I was happy with the quality of the drills and so forth anyway it's also in my queue because uh, my friend Dawn uh, saw what I had started and she fell in love with it and she asked for it and then these the rest of them are ones that are sort of in my cache to work on but um, but uh, there's no specific plan. There's a mix of small, these are mostly small-ish ones that I've been meaning to get started on for a while. Uh, let's see. Okay. Okay, so another little road trip to the other binders for my diamond paintings. Uh, so, hold on, I'm just pushing a chair out of the way so I can show you this. Okay, so this yellow binder, which is not in focus. Why is it not in focus? Nope. Let's zoom out a little bit. Okay. All right. That's better. So this diamond painting binder is all of my stash of diamond paintings. Uh, these are the ones that I have not finished, but that are ready to start. There's one page here for every one of them. And so it's a picture uh, I, I, what I do is when, it, when a diamond painting that I've ordered comes in, I move it from that black binder I just showed you into this binder. So these are ready. And I mean, well, okay, some, there's a few that have uh, pages attached to them, but I think there's like three of them. So these are all my different diamond paintings in alphabetical order according to what I named them. Because I give every single one of my diamond paintings an individual name that means something to me. Um, there's so many. I think there's about 255 in here right now. Um, so yeah, that is, this is a, I think a two inch binder. It's almost full. 
And then this is my binder for finished diamond paintings and ones that I've given away. So once I take, you know, once they come out of this binder, they go into the in progress binder and then, or the black binder that I showed you because I have a tab for the diamond paintings in progress, like I showed you. Uh, and then when I finish the diamond painting in progress, it moves into this binder again in alphabetical order. And there's ones that are finished and they're just sort of in my spare room, which I'll show you momentarily. And there's the ones that are given away. And so uh, I used to write notes and I would attach them to uh, the sheets or the sheet for the diamond painting. Now I have the diamond painting notebooks. Uh, and so that's what I do is I keep track in there. Um, ah. But yeah, every single diamond painting that I've done, I have um, the sheet in here. So these are all the ones I've finished. And these are the ones I've given away. So this one I gave away to Margaret uh, unfinished. Um, so uh, it was one that I bought and she asked for a couple of diamond paintings to try out. And, um, and so, um, yeah. Uh, so I just keep track of the fact that I gave it away. This, oh, the, pub, um, the um, post-completion review for this is coming up later this month. Uh, not this coming week, but the week after. I'm just waiting for the pink raspberry to get back to me with uh, some issues that I encountered because I'd like them to have an opportunity to respond. Um, but I have re recorded my post-completion review and I'll just add anything that she sends me into the diamond painting. Uh, yeah, so these are just all the ones that I have given away to people. Um, this one went to my daughter. This one went to my father. Uh, uh, that one went to my friend Carol Ann. This one was another one that I gave unfinished to Margaret. This I bought uh, to give to Margaret's daughter, uh, granddaughter to do. Um, that was the first one that I, no, that's the one I just finished and gave to my daughter for Christmas. I can't remember if I've done the post-completion review on that. I've done it. I just haven't posted it probably. And then these I finished some time ago. Oops. I gave that away at Christmas. Gave that away. When did I give that away? Oh, I gave that to my ex-husband's aunt last uh, spring or summer. Give that to my friend Carolyn. So it's just a way for me to remember, uh, you know, the ones that I gave away. Um, I have pictures and of course there's the videos of them, but, uh, eh, this is another, this is another way. And that's what I gave to Gail. Okay. Uh, what's this? Oh yeah. Anyway. Oh, that's the one I gave to my husband's aunt. Uh, my ex-husband's aunt. Uh, the other one that I showed you, Starry Night, that was one that I gave uh, unfinished to Margaret. It was a spare copy that I had because I accidentally bought two when I was first starting diamond painting because I wasn't keeping track of what I bought. Um, so uh, that was that. And then this is the binder. A lot of you have seen this binder again, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time showing it to you. Uh, I originally bought it to spare uh, to store spare drills. But you see my spare, you, know, you see my whole messy apartment, but um, you see my spare drills. There's no way that they would fit in here. So uh, I have never actually used this. Um, I'll have to come up with another use for these cards. If I ever buy a color printer, I think what I'm going to do is uh, print thumbnails of all of my diamond paintings and I'll stick them in the pockets here. Um, instead of having a great big binder, uh, I'll just write the information or, you know, print the information on the back of the, uh, thumbnail and then it won't take up as much room. Um, and then what else I have in here are my two DMC color charts. So this is the official one from, I think, 2000 and what's the copyright? 2018. I think that's the newest one. And then this is the DMC color chart book, uh, Diamond Painting from Diamond Painting 911. And it just has all of the DMC colors. 
um, organized in different ways. Uh, so I like using both of them together when I'm sorting drills. Um, because I want to put them in the right place. So I will be uh, referring to both of these books when I do my big sort. And then, uh, where the heck is it? Oh, in here, all the diamond paintings that I give away or frame, I keep, except the um, uh, the one that I gave to, um, where did I? I'm not sure. Let's see. Yeah, this is all the ones that I've given away. Um, finished. Uh, I keep the I keep the the legends from the diamond painting because they're my souvenir of what I've done, and um, so yeah, so I just keep all of these. The only the only exception to that was one that I did uh, I say as a commission, but it really wasn't a commission. Anne bought the um, the canvas, like she paid for the canvas. And I drilled it for her for free, and she gave it away to her niece. And because I didn't know how her niece would want to frame it, like, uh, and and I chose out chose a frame, a custom frame for her. But we didn't know if she would be framing it herself or whether she'd be getting somebody else to do it. So I didn't feel right about cutting the legend off. Um, so some of these are very yellow, and that's because I was using uh, polyurethane that was not clear. It was not a clear gloss. It was just gloss. So uh, the, it yellowed the, um, the uh, canvas. It doesn't matter. The, uh, the diamond paintings that I sealed with the um, non-clear polyurethane look fantastic. Uh, you can't tell that there's any yellow whatsoever to them um, because there was no pure white in them. Anyway, so that's it. Uh, I think that's... Oh, no, I still got more. Just ignore the mess. But here I have my travel portfolio, and it is, um, it's got a whole bunch of medium-sized diamond paintings that, uh, oh, this is going to be a gift for somebody. So um, I've got the ones, the smaller ones that I want to work on next uh, in here. And uh, also I can take it with me if I go on a long trip somewhere. Uh, I can take it with me and know that um, my paintings are protected. And then I have another little bag. Oh, these are the extra drills for the painting that I have, the French peacock. And these are just little ones. Uh, these are ones that I bought mostly during the 1111 sale, uh, the mandalas that I bought during the 1111 sale. And I am now, uh, I bought, I don't know, probably about. 15 or 18 of these bubble diamond paintings um, which I'll do uh, all in one shot in time lapses and so they're just in a little bag here that I keep handy um, actually I always put oh my god there goes the dog again whoops okay that fell on the floor let's pick it up um, and of course I have a plastic cloth on my table um, because the cat's always on here and I've got two layers of cloth underneath it to protect the table which I had to have refinished um, from uh, the cat's claws and so forth. Uh, underneath the plastic top I have my smaller works in progress and um, so here we have the uh, crystal doll. Oh, and receipts for various things um, so I just pull it out from underneath there and stick it on my drafting table which is about three feet away from me uh, this is my spare light pad and this is my travel bag for diamond painting so um, so it's uh, I bought it I think it cost me like two dollars and sixty eight cents on Aliexpress it's a purse insert and uh, so for when I go on trips and stuff, I've got a whole bunch of bags. I got more bags. Um, I have uh, big plastic bags. I have, uh, oh, that's the pr protective cover for my light pad. What else do I have in here? Oh, I've got clips in case I need them. What else? I think I've got something. I don't know what's in the zipper pocket. Hold on. Nothing in the zipper pocket. 
I would actually probably fill this up with other stuff uh, as I work, but uh, in my travel bag I also have um, two or three of these 28 size containers. And what else? Hold on. Um, oh, and then a bunch of drill kits and more supplies, post-it notes that I need for various things. Um, just, you know, various supplies. And then I have uh, my pencil case, which is where I keep uh, my drilling tools. So, and I'm sorry, but uh, so this is in here all the time. And it's got more drill boats. Uh, it's got another little pair of scissors. It's got tape. It's got uh, a print glue stick. It's got a bunch of pens, a bunch of diamond painting pens. It's got a, a silhouette pen. It's got regular pen, a Sharpie pen. What else is in here? Um, yeah, a bunch of diamond painting pens, including one of my ones from... Uh, oh, this one was from... Uh, we can handle this or we've got a handle on this or something like this. Anyway, it's a Kingston Diamond Painting Company. Uh, let's see what else I have in here. Oh, um, these are cut up dryer sheets. Uh, some pink wax inside the macaron. What else do I have in here? Let's see. Oh, and, um, oh yeah, I did try the dental wax. And I think what I did was I mixed it with pink wax to see if it would be less likely to come out of the pen. I can't remember how that works. I'll have to try that experiment again sometime. Okay, uh, what else? What else? Um, hmm. I have to clean up. That's one thing for absolutely sure. Uh, oh, I haven't shown you. Hold on. So this is on the other side of my dining room table. Hold on, I just gotta kick this box over. Um, this is all of my diamond painting journals that I bought, um, the special shapes and stuff, and a bunch of pencil cases. So I have done one of the journals, actually two, I've done two, I've done one journal and one wristlet. There are four other wristlets in here. Um, and they're, well, I'm using one of the journals. And then these are all my drill containers. Uh, plus the one that you saw over at, uh, at the coffee table, my printer, my shredder, or my shredding, which I'll take downstairs soon. Um, but yeah, these are full, full of drills. Full of drills. Um, that's what 255 containers, uh, or 255 diamond paintings of drills looks like. Uh, this one here uh, was also filled with um, 1111 diamond paintings, but uh, like drills from 1111 diamond paintings, but I was able to stuff them into some of the other containers. And I do have one empty container that I bought at Ikea last time I was there uh, so that I can transfer uh, drills from my bags the red bags into uh, the diamond painting um, containers. I don't know where the hell I'm going to put these because I don't like having them here in my dining room, but I really don't have space for them anywhere else in my house. So my dining room is a diamond painting room. Um, those are my photo albums over there. Uh, and then in the back are boxes from um, diamond paintings and ever moment tubes and stuff like that. Every now and again, I clean them out and I just keep one or two and then I start building up again. That is not every eight box. That is just some of the boxes that I thought, hmm, for my big diamond paintings, if I ever decide to give them away or something like that, I'll need a box. So I keep some of the boxes. Most of them just get uh, recycled. <sighs> I don't know, do you want to see, do you want to see where I keep my diamond paintings when I'm finished them and my stash of unfinished? Sure you do. 
So we're going to go on another road trip through my apartment. It's a condo, but anyway. Just turn off the light on the way. That's the storage room. Okay, so now we're going into my spare bedroom at the end of my hall. And, oh, usually I keep the door closed. All right, I uh, did laundry and I have not remade the bed. Um, okay, so this is a great big humongous piece of um, like sign board, but it's really, really thick and sturdy, which I am going to need to expand the size of my um, drafting table so that I can work on this monstrous diamond painting, which is uh, 100 by 150. So this is a meter high, three, 39 inches high, uh, the drill area, and it's uh, four and a half feet long. So it actually comes to the very back of this, um, of this piece of black uh, um, signboard. As you see, it's actually bigger than the signboard. But I'll be able to lay that uh, across my work table, my um, drafting table, and um, have extra space to set out my tools and things like that. This is the uh, trend filing system box that I store my um, most of my unfinished can like my undrilled canvases in my stash of to do uh, and I've got this box of cat litter here it never moves because it's actually holding this up to keep the paintings behind it flat so this holds uh, all my diamond paintings well there's about 200 or so in here and these are all with the ones I haven't done yet and this goes up to 50 by 75 can fit in here. Um, for my bigger diamond paintings, so I've got my small diamond paintings in here. I don't know how many there are. And sorry, I know it's I know it's um, out of focus. I, I'm not sure I can actually help with that. Um, yeah, there's uh, a lot in here, a lot. Um, and I intend on working on them this year. This this year, my my um, commitment to myself is I'm going to reduce my stash. Okay, so that's where I keep those. And if you're interested in the trend filing system, I have done a bunch of organizing videos. Oh, I'm going to zoom out again. Uh, I've done a bunch of organizing videos where I showcase this. And then, okay, so in between uh, the monstrous diamond painting and um, the others is this, hold on, let me just pull it out. So it's another one of these trend uh, folders. And uh, normally it would fit in here, but the diamond paintings are too big. They all extend way beyond the edge because they're over 75 centimeters uh, long and uh, so these are all my large diamond paintings so you know 60 by 80 uh, this one is 65 by 65 I don't oh uh, oh it, this one's too high so they're either too high to fit in the trend box or they're too long to fit in the trend box um, so yeah uh, 60 by 60 yeah so there's I don't know how many here I'm going to be doing a stash video of the different sizes of my diamond paintings in my stash. So there's that. Okay. Now here's the part where I'm kind of starting to worry about my addiction to diamond painting. Over here are things that I've bought or found that I can use for framing. That's some of it. It's not all of it. It's some of it. Oh, and there's my easel that I bought that I don't use now because I have something better. But I've got frames that I bought at Ikea. Um, I've got frames that I found. I've got um, poster board. I've got, um, I got these uh, frames at, um, like they're, like they're, um, 
I got those at the Pink Raspberry so that I can uh, staple canvases to them. What else do I have here? Just all kinds of stuff for framing diamond paintings. All kinds of stuff for framing diamond paintings. Um, and then I went shopping at Ikea again and I bought more stuff for diamond paintings. So these are sort of under bed storage and they will hold 36 by 21. So I can put, oh no, wait a minute. Although that's an in inches. Okay, so these will hold a diamond painting uh, that's, you know, f let's say a 50 up to a 50 by 90 diamond painting. Um, so I'll just be able to store some of my finished ones um, flat underneath a bed because right now I am storing them in folders. So I bought, I think there's, is there one in here? Yeah, there's one in here of those because I only need one. And then these are more framing supplies. And this is more storage for diamond painting. So these are actually um, um, what do you call them? Vacuum bags for uh, storing clothes for packing and you know, packing bags and stuff like that. Uh, but I plan on using them to store diamond paintings because these will hold a uh, 40 by 50 easily uh, and here a 50 by 70 easily so I have the big container for my huge diamond paintings and then the smaller containers for my medium-sized diamond paintings and then these are uh, this is just a storage system that you hang from a closet rail and uh, I plan on uh, putting various supplies in there. Uh, so I've got in my spare closet here. Uh, what else? Oh yeah, and then these, of course, are the Vizback frames that I get at Ikea. Uh, they're poster frames, and you just clamp the diamond painting in between those two pieces of wood using these clamps. And then, whoops, and then they have uh, the hanging holes there. I did a video on these. In fact, I think I've done two videos on these, so I'm not going to get into it in detail. Um, if you're interested, you can go through my organizing videos, which I will link uh, in this video here, and um, and you can, you can find all of that stuff. All right, finally, these are my completed diamond paintings. Whoops. Uh, again, I have to make the bed. The sheets are all washed and folded. I just have to make the bed. Um, but that's why I wanted to get an underbed storage solution because I have to move these every time somebody sleeps in the bed. I have to haul them off to my bedroom um, or uh, whatever. So if I can just stick them under a bed, I'll be happy. So these are my smaller diamond paintings. These are my larger diamond paintings, and you know, there's quite a few here. Quite a few. Um, not as many as I would like. I really want to make inroads on my large diamond paintings. And then uh, that is um, another very large diamond painting that I just finished, and I just haven't put it in the, um, in the folder yet. I will um, when I make the bed. Um, and I think, I think that's it for all my diamond painting stuff. Yeah. So, uh, I had planned to make this into a drill and chat video, but I'm going to record a drill and chat video on the pink, um, on the French peacock as another item. I'm just going to upload this one, um, so that you have something to watch on a Sunday afternoon. Okay, everybody. Thanks. Let me know what you think of my diamond painting addiction. Uh, I know that that's the name of another YouTuber, but she's not alone in having a diamond painting addiction. So there you go, everybody. Hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know down below what you thought. Bye-bye. Don't forget to like it because that'll help me with my rankings on YouTube, okay? And if you do like this sort of stuff, subscribe and you'll get much more of it. All right, bye-bye, everybody.